world right now mm -hmm. with what is happening, especially on Wednesday. And I mm -hmm. speak to them and some of them really fear mm -hmm. being there. And now things are not any, any better. Um, what do you say to this? Because some people only mm -hmm. see what, ha what happens through the lenses of a journalist. Yeah, I think, um, I think again, as Article 19, one of our other areas of focus is uh, the freedom of the media yeah. and basically the space uh, of media to exercise their rights under Article 34 uh, of the Constitution. Um, and I think um, legitimately the role, for instance, first of all, in the context of protests, yeah. the role of the media, as you said, is the lens by which people get this information. They document so much. They are observers. They um, they might turn out to be witnesses, but yes. they might also, in that moment, prevent police from behaving a certain way because they know they are being captured, which is essential for us as a society. And I think it is just, uh, and you see, I, I think why even in March, you remember how it started. We started with. Um, with the attempt to sort of prevent the media from covering the, yeah. the protest yeah. um, with a direct sort of, um, uh, they were being um, targeted by their, um, what is it called? The oversight body, yeah. the communications the authority, yeah, yeah. the regulator. And then um, we, we, again, that developed, and you could see the sequence, right? It started with that, and then the next time it's as if people felt it was legit to actually go now and attack the journalist, yeah, right? Um, on the second day or the third day. And it progressed that way. Yeah? Uh, you know, that van or car that had journalists on it. And yeah, and there were tear gas while in it. Officer. And I think at the end of that, there was, there was about 25 or something like that journalists, according to NCK, who were, who were attacked. And then now we see it again being replicated now. Mm -hmm. Because then what has happened, even as for us as an organization, even in just conversations with people in the sector, our immediate thought was that um, once you create that perception that, oh, among these journalists, there might also be officers, yeah. then you're likely to, to encourage or cause the protesters to now uh, come against the journalists and start asking them to show accreditation or whatever mm. it might be, and you cannot then control. And then I think the sad part of it is that because even the state or the officers there do not want the media, mm. they might also ride on it, and that's how it ended up now being um, in in March. You could not tell whether it was officers who were attacking or yeah. was it uh, just the protesters or was it goons or was it people who are taking advantage of the whole situation. And I think, um, again, it comes down to just being able to allow those people, because when it comes now to issues of uh, following up on these cases, we need those people who are there. We need those clips to be able to follow up um, on, on some of those cases. And so I think it's, it's one of the protected, again, area is, first of all, the freedom of the media, but also the freedom of people to observe and document protest. Right. And you cannot use um, that general uh, proposition that um, you masquerading as officers. It, it just is, is unacceptable. But then there's also now the second incident of journalists again, sort of to just show the intent, the ill intent yes. and the ill motives of our officers. Because courts, first of all, are very, they are public public spaces and essentially you, you I think you saw immediately after what happened at Milimani uh, um, Babu's uh, lawyer was very you could even tell he was really upset yeah. because this is a public place this is where we come for justice what do you mean even as you you're pushing us out of court it's mm. what do you have we gotten there as a country that we now are even seeking to prevent people from accessing courts and basically just shows you that thing of trying to kill the trace, sort of trying to eliminate yeah. the, the tracks or the trace um, of what is going on in that situation. Um, you'd also wonder why there were so many police officers at a court, and then you put the judiciary in this position where they now have to get sort of involved. Uh, of course, also recalling that judiciary do not have their own security. They yeah. also rely on these police uh, officers to safeguard uh, the courts mm. on a normal day. So I think it has just been, I think for me, overall, it's just been pushing, we've just been pushing to the edge on yeah. so many things that are simply unacceptable. Um, that causes you to wonder, like that lawyer was wondering is, 
where are we headed as a country? We are compromising rights that should ideally never be compromised. Yes. So for instance, when you talk about rights of an arrested person, mm -hmm. if people are being held beyond 24, actually the constitution, there are only four rights that cannot be, uh, they are, we call them non-derogable rights. They are rights that cannot be limited uh, in mm -hmm. any circumstances. Mm -hmm. So there's a right to inhumane, inhumane treatment, torture, uh, and then there's a right to slavery, protection from slavery and servitude. Then you have the right to a fair trial. And then you have the right to the writ of habeas corpus. I think you've had it. Habeas corpus is where they ask for you to produce the person. So for instance, uh, when they were talking about Babu, nobody knows where you, uh, you are. So you can go to court and ask for the writ of habeas corpus. And then mm. that's where you could hear even for the, that bodyguard. Yes. They were saying produce the person in court. So, and you see in the week we have violated all those rights, yes. uh, except probably slavery and servitude. Because if you hold somebody in communicado for three days with no food, with no water, that is inhumane treatment. Yes. Then you're denying them access to legal, uh, to legal, um, legal access, legal services. They cannot talk to their lawyers. So then you're compromising the right to a fair trial. And then you have habeas corpus. Uh, the court issues orders. That, so in that, the court has done what it's supposed to do. But then what do you do? You go drop somebody in some dark place mm. uh, in the middle of the night. So it's just the erosion of the, then we have the freedom of the media, yeah, the people, the further states mm. uh, for for good reason, it's yep. they're in that status for good reason because they, they sort of close that um, gap. So just being pushing those rights and pushing, just continuing to push the standards, yep. the scale down is is of, of really great concern and I hope we don't see it being repeated. Yeah. Um, and bodies like MCK come out uh, very strongly. And to not to be defend. alarmist because uh, mm -hmm. the people who has, have said this is going back to a police state yeah. and arbitrary arrests. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not about who has been arrested, whether mm -hmm. you agree with them or not. Mm -hmm. It's basically the rule of law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it would, if you use these standards today, mm -hmm. they'll apply for you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, you have journalists who are caught in the middle now. Mm -hmm police person can be ta targeting them not to cover or mm. reveal mm -hmm. and a protester would be not too sure whether mm. you are a plain clothes mm. officer mm. so for you first of all do you feel we're I'm, I'm being alarmist by the concern of police states with all that has happened in the, in the last um, to some extent no mm -hmm. because i'm trying to think of um, a year for example before the handshake 2017 mm -hmm. All these things happen, mm -hmm. and then uh, even after the handshake, uh, you remember sometimes we got senators arrested so that they don't vote mm. uh, for the finance bill, yes. or, you, know, you know, appropriation bill. Mm -hmm. We've had um, uh, basically erosion by fraction, mm -hmm. um, and it's been happening. Uh, mm -hmm. So the question is uh, sometimes who is doing it and mm -hmm. and uh, who is supporting it. Uh, but I usually say that. Um, we should have equality before the law, mm. and the rule of law should apply to okay. everyone. Mm. Yes. And so um, it's, it's to discourage this, you know, we, every, we've been boxed into this partisan, mm. um, partisan ideology that, so that we, we forget that actually we have slid mm. uh, a long way and we really need to go back yeah. to the principles of the, in, with which, we ha which is in the Constitution, mm. no matter who uh, mm -hmm. or no matter whether you agree or disagree with the person. Uh, to going back to the issue um, of, of journalists and also how we police protests, mm -hmm. this issue of having police officers in civilian clothing with no, fo no form of, mm -hmm. uh, of identification actually breeds impunity, mm -hmm. breeds lack of accountability because who knows who, whether they're officers or not? Mm -hmm. yes. How are we supposed to know? And perhaps we need legislation that uh, requires officers to be in uniform, except the detectives who are perhaps doing things undercover. Yeah. But those, that has to be the exception. Mm -hmm. These days, anyone can come in front of you and arrest you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah? Um, and um, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an important thing to have officers uniformed and identifiable mm -hmm. throughout, even during protests. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this also uh, looks like it's designed to to endanger the life of journalists, mm. because if you're in the field, you're in a highly charged environment, uh, there are stones flying, and uh, 
some of the protesters or even um, people who may, may not be protesters mm -hmm. might look at you as a, mm -hmm. as a threat yep. and might want to do something to you because uh, you are a journalist but you might be a police officer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it is, it is quite, um, quite worrying. Mm -hmm. um, all these rights enforce, enforce each other. Mm -hmm. um, so right to information, freedom and independence of the media, mm -hmm. uh, the, your right to participate in public affairs, public participation, mm -hmm. Uh, which also brings accountability. Exactly. It also enriches the democracy. Uh, but we are s starting to knock them down slowly and slow by slowly, and uh, that police state might actually arrive. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. not good for anyone. Yeah. Is it a hopeless situation where we feel there's no way out for holding police to account, especially since we we've been told protests will be there on Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Is it a hopeless situation from where you sit as you close and as you close? We'll start with no, you. No, I, I would like to, <laughs> to pick off on the optimism of, yeah. uh, of Dimas and just say, hopefully we do not um, continue to have just a um, progressive constitution. Right. It was majorly <laughs> aspirational. I think at this point we have stopped saying the new constitution. Oh, yeah. We are beyond the 10 <laughs> year mark. The yeah. people who are actually born with the constitution are now teenagers, yeah? I believe, yeah? Because it's 13, 13 years later. So I guess it's just to, as we said, to embody those values. We have yeah. a constitution that is quite progressive, but I don't see us, we cannot, it cannot be aspirational forever. forever. We've got to want better, demand better. And it is, at the very, at that very heart is where I would, I would pick my optimism. At least we have the tools by which we can try to pursue this accountability. We have the tools by which we can ask people or hold people responsible and remind them of their obligations yeah. as stated in what we call the green norm or the grand norm because it's at the core of our legal systems, legal processes. Uh, we have institutions like IPO. As long as much as they are struggling, we at least have a place to start, right? Yes. We have courts. We have an independent judiciary, which was not a thing that we had um, uh, 20 years ago, right? So at least we have the mechanisms by which we can pursue this accountability. So I would say that it's, it's, it's not lost. There's still time. We are continuing to learn ways of uh, just being able to better monitor this, um, whatever is going on on the ground just being able to coordinate better and being able to document uh, these situations better. So I hold the hope that um, indeed um, we are not there yet, but I hope that we don't repeat, we don't keep repeating this cycle over and because I guess, I guess in my lifetime, so to say it happens every five years or every, Election every cycle. few years mm -hmm. and uh, it's quite tiring that we don't seem to be learning anything, we, we seem to be, to be falling to the same traps. Um, all the time, but I think my optimi op optimism stands in having the proper instruments, having the proper institutions uh, that by which at least we yeah. can try and pursue accountability, uh, even if the, the, the police service are not willing to hear us and uh, behave better next time. Uh, at least we have the mechanisms uh, yeah. to pursue that accountability. There must is there hope. There, there is hope because if we become hopeless, then, then what next? <laughs> uh, having practiced uh, law in, in the civil rights uh, yeah. area of things for over 10 years, mm -hmm. um, I guess we have, we have seen it all. We have seen uh, 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 people um, supporting bad laws and then becoming victims of the same bad laws. Mm -hmm. But then you have to defend the right mm -hmm. thing anyway, and mm -hmm. you have to go and and defend them. And so uh, I would just like to encourage everyone, whenever you look at the law, mm -hmm. when, whenever you are, especially the people who are in positions of power, mm -hmm. uh, give us an environment that will serve everyone, mm -hmm. and also imagine that that tool is in the hands of someone else, mm -hmm. um, so that um, we go back to a country. I've, I've, these days I even think that there's no more legislation coming out of parliament, really. Mm. Um, it is just a marketplace. Um, it, w we have become quite cynical, mm. and in, understandably so, but mm. there has to be hope. Mm. Right. And uh, as long as we are still here, still fighting the good fight, mm -hmm. 
uh, we will get the cracks and uh, uh, we'll have a better country. But we all have to want a better country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and yeah. I like what you guys have really brought out in the fact that mm -hmm. rule of law mm -hmm. should remain. Mm -hmm. Let me use the words of the fourth president, irregardless. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because <laughs> if anything mm -hmm. is um, more reason mm -hmm. to make sure we abide by the law, it's what was said by the fourth president mm -hmm. to the fifth president. Mm -hmm. yeah. He sees and feels the effect of misuse yes. mm -hmm. of the instruments mm -hmm. of power mm -hmm. and what he is facing mm -hmm. should even be a sign mm -hmm. to the current president and the regime yes. it shouldn't be for the regime it ought to be for everyone yes. mm -hmm. and in the rule of law mm -hmm. for the good and the better of mm -hmm. everyone yes. so i believe as well that there's hope and we'll be staying here to keep tabs on what um, happens even this coming week mm -hmm. because there'll be protests in on Wednesday, yeah. as it has been um, announced by the opposition, and we'll see how the government is going to react to that. Hopefully, things will be better. Um, and I will end with a quote here, not mine, uh, George Brandis, and this is thanks to my um, producer, Brian. You can't be selective about freedom of speech. If you say you believe in freedom of speech, you have to acknowledge the people whose views you disagree with, people whose views you may detest, nevertheless have the right to freedom of speech. My name is Mark Masai. I'd like to thank Demas Kiprono from Amnesty International as well as Jane Mohia from Article 19 East Africa for the time that you have given us and the thoughts that you've given us and all hope is not lost. I thank the team that is behind the scenes making this possible and everyone who's tuned in and this will be uploaded for those who perhaps have missed a good section of it. We've covered a lot and I feel there is good use and good information that we can use moving forward. All hope is not lost. Have a good night, everyone.